Welcome back, everybody. My name is Tim. This is another Real Ideal Gear Review, and today we're looking at GMTs. Which GMT is right for you? Um, take a look at this video and watch it all the way through. I, I'm going to go through just the highlights of the different, the basically two different types of GMTs, and I've got a couple of different examples here, and I've got one hybrid, which is going to be the Nighthawk. The Nighthawk, the Nighthawk has something that's a little bit different, and I actually think this is the best overall um movement between the two, uh, the Traveler and the Caller GMT or the True GMT and the Office GMT, whatever you want to call them. Those are the two big basic types that are out there. So this is the Laurier Hydra Zulu. This is a Miyota 9075 movement. This is considered a True GMT or a Traveler's GMT. And what that means is that you can adjust the local time by going to the first position on the crown and you can adjust the hour hand only. Now when you adjust the hour hand, and you just keep going around clockwise, notice that the date is gonna change after I go twice around, just like any other analog uh, mechanical watch. Go around once more, nothing changed, go around again, and there I'm changing the date. By the way, this is the way that you change the date on a true GMT. You can also do the date change in the second position. Notice the second hand stops, it's ha hacking. And I can do the same thing, and notice the GMT hand and the hour hand, everybody's moving all together. So I'm moving all the, the time indicators on here. Went around once, nothing happened. Okay, This takes a lot longer to do. Um, but this is the only way to change the date is to actually run through and cycle the, uh, the gears in there for the date. All right, so now it's 3 o'clock. All right, so let's just say it's 6 in the morning where I left. This is my home. This is where I live. So I'm going to put the GMT hand at 6. I'm using the 24-hour scale. So the GMT hand is going to go off of that 24-hour scale, whether it's on the inside, on the dial, or it's on the outside, on the bezel. All right? Now, you could also, if you wanted to take you know, keep track of three time zones, you would have to do mental math and just double the indicators, the indices on the dial for your GMT hand. And then you can use the outside bezel on this watch for a third time zone if you want. Okay. All right. So that's kind of a, that's a higher level type thing. I've never had a, a need to do that. Um, two time zones is pretty much all I've ever needed. Um, my oldest son was deployed to North Africa for uh, almost a year with the National Guard and, uh, so I had things, I had, I had all the watches that had dual time or world time or GMTs. I set them up for D Djibouti. That's where he was stationed. And uh, so it worked out great that way. I've never had an occasion to do three time zones. So, But you can do that with, with certain watches. All right. So we've got this set up to be at 6 o'clock right here. Okay. GMT hand is set there. Now I'm going to do local time. Let's just say it's 9 p.m. Okay. Now I'm using a 12-hour scale now. So I'm just going to take, go back to the first position because the main handset, the central handset, the hour and the minute hand is gonna be my local time. And here it is at nine o'clock in the evening. Now it doesn't say nine o'clock in the evening. It doesn't say 1900 uh, or 2100. Um, it's, you know, it's like a typical mechanical analog watch. It is, you know, look out the window. Is it dark out or about to be dark? Yeah, okay, so that's PM, so that's 9 PM, okay? The GMT hand, because it's on a 24 hour scale, gives you the, um, obviously the, the AM and PM within the 24 hour scale. But also notice that 12 noon is down here at the six o'clock position, okay? So 12 noon is at the six o'clock position down here on the GMT hand, all right. So the Traveler GMT is great. You can you can move back and forth where you're tra if you're doing a lot of traveling, crossing a lot of time zones. You know your salesperson, whatever the job issue is, or traveling for family, or or shoot, you're just on a cruise line and you're going around the world and you're crossing time zones left and right. Okay, so that's an easy thing to do with the Traveler's GMT. The hard thing to do is to set the date um, because you have to cycle through all the dates before you get to the date. Let's say it's the 26th and the watch is set up on the 29th. Yep, you're gonna have to go all the way around the horn to get to the 26th, okay? Now the Caller GMT, uh, this one is, I think, easier to use. And this is obviously more set up for people who don't do a lot of traveling, um, but maybe you're keeping track of a separate time zone. 
Um, so to me, the, tr the caller GMT is much easier. So the first position, you're going to do two things. If you turn it clockwise, you're going to get to you to change the GMT hand. Notice that the GMT hand doesn't change the date at all. Okay. But if I go the opposite direction, counterclockwise, I change the date. So it's a fast, quick set date function. I can get through in just a matter of seconds. I can go all the way around the horn on the date. Okay. Then the second position does the local time. And this also, if I keep going around, will also affect the date. So it didn't there. Okay. Just like any mechanical watch, you go around twice and then the date changes. And there the date, the date just changed. So let's just say it's seven in the morning. So the date just changed, which means I'm in the AM right now. So there it is, 7 in the morning. Set the time first locally. Then go back and set your GMT. I'm going to go back to the first position. And I'm going to say it is, uh, let's say it's uh, 8 o'clock in the evening. Okay, 8, 8 p.m. So I'm using the 24-hour scale out here. And that's 20 hundred hours. All right, there it is. So there it is, 8 p.m. At where I'm coming from, my home time, and it is, you know, 7 p.m. or 7 a.m., whatever you want, um, when it comes down to the local time, okay? The date is set also in that first position, so a little bit easier to use that way. Now, the, the, ne the Nighthawk is the sweet spot between the two, because when you when you take the Nighthawk out and you put it to full uh, first position, you get to change the hour hand. So if you, you want to do the, the Traveler GMT switching of the time zones, it's really easy. Notice the second hand keeps moving. doesn't stop the second hand, so your synchronization. And that's another thing about Traveler GMTs. If you're synchronizing your watch and you're getting that precise about time, which is totally fine, I do that. Um, you don't lose that precision when you're adjusting the local hour time. Okay, the local hour. So you can go all the way around here to say 6 a.m., Okay, there it is, 6 a.m. Now to change the GMT. Now on this hand, on this watch, the GMT is on the hemisphere to the left of the 12 and the 6. And you'll notice there is a red scale and a white scale. Red scale is p.m. And on a 24-hour scale, you know, it's going to be 1,300 hours, 1,400 hours, all the way up to, to 24. And then the white scale is your a.m. time, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 12 in the uh, 12 noon. Okay. So for me to change the GMT, I'm going to take and I'm going to move, whoops, here we go. I'm going to move the hour a minute hand and notice the GMT hand moves with it as well. So now here we go. Let's say it's uh, six in the evening. So I'm going to put that red airplane, which is my GMT indicator on the 1800 hours. All right, got that set up. Okay, now I'm going to go back and set the local time. And let's say the local time is 2 in the morning. So I'm going to go back to the first position and go to 2 o'clock in the morning. There it is. Now, if I want to set the date, I go the opposite direction in the first position. And that quick sets the date. So you really get the best of both worlds on this watch. You get the best of the hour switching, which is pretty quick. Um, you get the quick date set. And then you've got the GMT function. Um, you, you get the hacking. If you go to the second position, it hacks, stops the second hand. Um, but you can still adjust the traveler time, the traveler GMT portion of it with the second hand running. So you get the best of both worlds. Now, which is the one that I prefer? You know, I prefer the collar GMT. This is a glycine airman. This is a collar GMT. All right. So how do we know that? Because when I go to the first position, I can adjust the GMT hand. And if I turn the opposite direction, I get the date. So I prefer this because I can set the date really fast. Most of my watches I wear for a day, maybe two days, and then I switch it out. And which means that a lot of these watches, the mechanical watches wind down and they stop. And what I don't like about the Traveler GMT, and it's not, it's just the way it is. It's the way it's designed. And that is when I want to set the date on a Traveler GMT, I have to go around and around and around and around, especially if I'm going, let's say it's the 29th today and I have to set it to the 26th. Well, I have to go around and around to go 29, 30, 31, 1, 2, 3, all the way around to get back to 26. So to me, that's a pain. All right. And I'm not traveling a lot, so I don't really need to have this first position movement on the true, true GMT. Um, I just typically set these because I have people living in different time zones and that's really my primary reason for having a GMT at this point in time. So 
for those of you that are out there traveling around, you're probably going to want to do the Traveler GMT. And for those of you that are kind of more localized in one place, maybe you travel here and there for a week at a time and, and you go back home again, the Caller GMT is probably the way to go. The Caller GMT typically is a little bit cheaper. Um, the uh, Miyota movement has the 9075, which is the, the true GMT, and the, the NH34 is a collar GMT. So you're going to get a lot you're gonna get a lot of options from the manufacturers, the major manufacturers of movements that are out there. Of course, you also get the in-house movements as well that, that are doing that. But those are, like always, they're higher priced because it's an in-house movement. So for me, it's a collar GMT. That's what I prefer. And uh, it's it seems to work best for me for that. So now I've got that kind of nailed down. Like 9075, NH34. Which am I going to go with? I'm going to go with the NH34. Um, the 9075. The only reason I like the 9075, um, it, it's a pain to to set the date on it, but you get the high beat movement. And so if I really want a high beat GMT movement, then I'm going to go the 9075 and just deal with the date set. Okay. So that's kind of the, 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 uh, expression of my mental thinking here out in the open for everybody so that you can kind of understand where I'm coming from in that one. So there you go. So if, if you want to take a look at some of these watches, uh, I've got reviews on these watches. I also have watches that I've reviewed that I'm not going to hang on to because I can't hang on to all of them. They're going to be at realidealgear.com. Um, a number of them have been selling out. I've got a whole slew of them now I'm going to put on the website. So you're going to see, a. A fresh new batch going on there and uh, they're I think at a really really good price I've got a couple limited editions on there that uh, they're they're at mark fair market value you're not going to get a screaming deal on them but at the same time you're just not going to find them anywhere because they're they're out of production so um, but check out real ideal dear real ideal gear.com for those kinds of things uh, put in the comments down below what you have for GMT movements and watches I'm always curious about other GMT watches that are out there as well and uh, we'll just move on and uh, hopefully keep track of where I'm at and where loved ones are at as well. So my name is Tim. This has been another Real Ideal Gear Review. We'll catch you guys next time.